Today's lesson is called The Life Changing Effects of Keeping a Journal. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going to talk about something called keeping a journal or writing in your diary. Basically, that just means you write things in a book about what happens in your life. Some people do that. I am a voracious writer in my journal. I do it pretty much, well, not every day, but.、Uh, You know, every once in a while, I get caught up with it. But if you do keep a journal, it can change your life. There you go. Apparently, keeping a journal can change your life. Just look at the title here. It says the life changing effects of keeping a journal. By the way, if you do write in your journal every day, or if you do it habitually, frequently, as if by schedule or on a schedule, you are keeping a journal. That's the phrase here to keep a journal. Okay. Now, one other note. Earlier, Roger said a journal and a diary are about the same thing, and that's true. But let's say you're a young person in the United States. Usually, it's girls who will write in a diary, and boys, if they do, they will be keeping a journal. Okay, boys rarely have diary. Sadly, yes, these words have been gendered a little bit for young people in the United States. I just say they're my notes, basically, and there is an exception to that rule, though. The、uh, writer Jim Carroll had his basketball diaries. Maybe you saw the movie that was made from those writings,、uh, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, a number of years ago. But in any case, here, yes, keep a journal, and it can change your life. Let's find out what this is all about. Let's read the first paragraph, and then we'll come back to talk about it. The life-changing effects of keeping a journal. If you're not journaling on a daily basis, it's something you ought to try. Some people believe their everyday lives aren't interesting enough to be recorded. However, a journal doesn't have to contain only life events. It can also be a space for self-reflection. In fact, journaling is one of the most powerful self-improvement habits a person can nurture. Hello, everyone. The first part we saw the word nurture. This word is a verb, meaning to nurture. For example, the movie is about a coach nurturing poor athletes, turning them into future stars. That movie is about a coach nurturing poor athletes, turning them into future stars. That movie is about a coach nurturing poor athletes, turning them into future stars. That movie is about a coach My mother nurtures me and my younger sister to ensure we can grow up healthy. 我的母亲养育我和妹妹，确保我们可以健康长大。All right, everyone, let's get started. If you're not journaling on a daily basis, it's something you ought to try. That's how our article begins. And during the introduction, I talked about what it means to keep. A journal, okay. When you keep a journal, it's not like you own it. Oh, I've got this journal. I'm keeping it, okay. No, no, no. If you keep a journal, that means you write in it on a regular basis, okay. Here it says, if you're not journaling on a daily basis, if you're not keeping a journal, it's something you ought to try. So yes, keep a journal. Get a journal and write in it every day. Why? Because it's something that might just change your life. So you should give this a try. Yeah, back in college, of course, I had a number of friends who did this, as I did, keeping a journal, writing in your journal on a daily basis, or you could say writing in it every day or day to day. But if you don't do that, hey, you ought to consider doing it. Some people believe their everyday lives aren't interesting enough to be recorded. However, a journal doesn't have to contain only life events. So you might think, well, you know, I'm just an ordinary person. I go to school every day, or I go to work every day, and nothing exciting really ever happens to me. So yeah, I really shouldn't be writing in a journal. But you know, that doesn't stop a lot of people from posting rather boring, mundane pictures online or on Instagram of the chocolate cake that they ate at a coffee shop or something like that. So. If、uh, you think that stuff is worthy to post online, hey, that means your life is interesting enough to write a journal or、yeah. write in a journal. 
Maybe your life is boring. Yeah, I wake up every day at the same time and go to the same job and drink the same cup of coffee out of the same mug, so on and so forth. Maybe you think your life is boring. Does that mean that your journal has to be boring? No. Okay, you don't need to only put life events in your journal. Okay, that's what you do with a schedule. Let's say, okay, at nine a.m., wake up. Ten o'clock, be at the office, so on and so forth. But that is boring. So yeah, your journal—it doesn't have to just be a place where you put your life events. You can put anything you want in your journal. Your journal—it can also be a space for self-reflection. Yes, when you self-reflect, by the way, you think about yourself. You deeply ponder yourself. Where do I fit into things? Why am I alive? Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I feel the way I do about certain people or things? So on and so forth. You can kind of ask yourself these questions and hopefully get to the bottom of some of them. Yes, if you do keep a journal, you might just find yourself self-reflecting quite a lot. You're reflecting on yourself and the world and stuff like that. So this journal could be said to be a space for self-reflection. And in fact, journaling is one of the most powerful self-improvement habits a person can nurture. Uh, I guess someone said that somewhere here. So journaling here、uh, is being used as a verb here to journal or to write in a journal. I guess this particular practice of writing in a diary or writing in a journal is called journaling, and it's a very powerful tool for self improvement. Okay, so if you want to improve yourself, you know, kind of figure out what your life is doing or what you're doing in your life and where your life is going and how to be successful, writing a journal may. Help you with that? Yeah. Here, if you do nurture something, okay, you want that thing to grow and to develop and to become something great. So you showed a whole lot of care. Okay, that's what nurturing something is all about. And here, the idea is. is Yes, we've got journaling. It's a great habit to cultivate or to nurture because you can improve yourself by journaling. So this is something that you should do. It's a skill. It's an activity that you should actively try to make part of your life. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be back with more on journaling after this. Our lives are fast-paced and full of responsibilities. So it can be difficult to take a step back and look at the big picture. As a result, many of us spend our days on autopilot without truly evaluating how we pass our time. By taking just a few minutes in the mornings and evenings to jot down our thoughts and feelings, we can begin to recognize certain life patterns and make necessary adjustments. 第二部分，我们看到形容词 paced， 指步调点点点的。常用于复合字，像是 fast-paced， 就表示步调快的。例如 ，Tracy grew up in the countryside, so she is not used to the fast-paced lifestyle here. Tracy 从小在乡村长大，所以她不习惯在这里步调快速的生活。另外，补充 fast-paced 的反义词 slow-paced， 指步调缓慢的。举例来说 ，My grandparents live in a slow-paced village far from the city. 我的祖父母居住在远离城市的一座生活步调缓慢的村庄。接着，我们看到一个片语 jot down 加名词或 jot something down， 表示匆匆记下、草草写下、点点点。例如 ，Eric jotted down her phone number so he can call her up later。Eric 赶快记下他的电话号码，好让他之后可以打给他。或是 ，If you pass me that pen and paper。I'll jot the address down for you. 如果你把那支笔和纸递给我，我就帮你把地址写下来。Okay, so our first paragraph here introduced us to the idea of keeping a journal or journaling, and your reaction may have been, "Well, that's all nice and good. It sounds interesting, but who's got time to do that? I've got to work. I've got to go to school. I've got to wait for the bus. I got to take the train. I got to look for parking. I got to help my family do stuff. I need to take care of the kids, etc., etc." Yeah, who's got time for that? So here in the second paragraph, it begins, "Our lives are fast." 
fast-paced and full of responsibilities, so it can be difficult to take a step back and look. At the big picture, so yes, our lives are fast-paced, especially if you live in the big city, where, like I said, you need to go to school, go to work, etc., etc.、Uh, you're moving constantly, and you don't have much time to sit down. And when you do have time to sit down, you usually take out your phone and play video games or look at ridiculous posts on Instagram or whatever. So again, who's got time to actually step back and look? At the big picture. There you go. Our lives are so fast-paced; they move so quickly that it can be difficult to kind of get the big picture, to see the forest and not just the trees that are right in front of us. By the way, yes, if you do step back and take a look at the big picture, you try to see how all the smaller parts of your life fit together to make you. Who you are, and sometimes when people talk about seeing the big picture, they say, "Hey, right now, you're missing the forest for the trees. You're not seeing how each one of these trees that you encounter make up, or if you put them together, form a beautiful, wonderful forest." So yes, step back. Don't think about the trees. Think about how the trees all fit together and form a forest. Yeah. Take a step back and look at the big picture of things. But this is tough because lives these days are fast-paced, or it's moving quickly. Yeah, like a rhythm. Okay, so indeed, it's fast-paced. Life can be fast-paced in cities like Taipei or Taichung, maybe Gaoshung, where it will be slow-paced. Maybe in Hualien or Taichung or places like that. So for most of us here, we've got lots of responsibilities. We got to pass those tests. We got to please our parents and stuff like that. So yes, it's hard. Hard to step back or take a step back and look at the whole picture. Just to stop and say, "Hey, stop the world! I want to get off, and I just want to see things. I want to smell the roses. Basically, stop and smell the roses, and just kind of look at this life I'm living and quit living day to day on autopilot, as it says in the next sentence here. Yeah, as a result, many of us spend our days on autopilot without truly evaluating how we. Pass our time. We act like robots, like automatons, and we don't stop to smell the roses. We don't really evaluate how we pass our time. We don't try to figure out how we fit into the world. Anyways, let's go ahead and stop right now, okay, and start talking about a vocabulary word. The verb evaluate. Evaluate. Yes, just try to look at something and analyze it and come to some conclusions. You know, form an idea about something, what it means, what it's worth, and stuff like that. So you're going to evaluate different things. Your boss may evaluate you while you're working to make sure you're working efficiently and that you're receiving the proper pay and stuff like that. So yet we need to evaluate or kind of look at how we pass our time to pass judgment on it and、uh, you know value some things and not value some other things. And by taking just a few minutes in the mornings and evenings to judge. Jot down our thoughts and feelings. We can begin to recognize certain life patterns and make necessary adjustments. So, if you jot something down, that means you just take brief notes. Sometimes, just a couple of words to remind you of something. Maybe later on, you can write in more detail when you have time during the weekend or something like that. And yes, you can sort of evaluate or analyze your own life and then try to make some adjustments. Try to you know change it here and there so that you. You're happier, or that your life is more productive. Okay, let's move on now to the third part. We'll listen first. Journaling is also a great memory aid. We tend to forget most of what we hear, but journaling, even if we never reread what we've written, helps us commit things to memory. Writing has the added benefit of allowing us to strain non-important from important information. Therefore, journaling lets us target what we want to remember. And gain more focus in life. The third part, we see a phrase, "commit something to memory," means to remember a little bit, to remember a little bit. For example, our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Our teacher asked us to commit those special terms to memory. Memorize, 只记住，熟记。例如 ，Ivy must memorize a lot of information for her science class. 
。Ivy 在科学课上必须熟记很多资讯。最后，我们看到一个动词 strain， 指过滤、食材、资讯、拉伤、使紧张。例如 ，Sandy asked me to help her strain the vegetables for her. Sandy 请我帮她把蔬菜过滤出来，或是。I strained a muscle while I was working out the other day. 我前几天运动时拉伤了我的肌肉。再举一个例子 ，The man and woman's relationship has strained because they don't trust each other. 那对男女的关系紧张，因为他们彼此不信任对方。另外，这个字也可以当名词，指病株、生物的品种、动植物、疾病的种。我们可以说。The doctors are trying to figure out which strain of the disease the man has. 医生们试着弄清楚那位男子身上的病株为何。或是 vaccinations were useless against the new strain of the flu. 疫苗对这种新种流感无效。All right, folks. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Day one of our article on journaling. Okay, the final paragraph of today's lesson says journaling is also a great memory aid. So not only will it help you to change your life and to recognize certain life patterns, but journaling can also help you to remember things. Right. So we tend to forget most of what we hear, but journaling. Even if we never reread what we've written, helps us commit things to memory. So a lot of times we have conversations with people, and they may tell us interesting stories, but most of the time we'll just forget all about that kind of stuff. But if we write in a journal, we can write those stories down. And I do this all the time when people tell me stories. I try to remember them and then write them down. And、uh, yeah, even if I don't reread the journal, still it helps me commit those things to memory, which basically. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying memorizing things. So, yes, you may not be studying for a test and trying to memorize mathematical formulas or English vocabulary words, but in this particular case, you're just trying to remember what happens in your life or remember the things that other people tell you. Anyways, more on journaling and writing. Writing has the added benefit of allowing us to strain not important. From important information to tell the difference between non-important stuff and important stuff. Yeah, here we're not talking about like strain, like overwork on the muscles or the psyche or anything like that. If you strain something, you separate or you filter one thing from another somehow. Right. So basically, you filter it again. You save things that are important and things that happened to you that weren't important. You just don't write about those. Therefore, or as a result, journaling lets us target what we want to remember and gain more focus in life. So writing in a journal will help us emphasize what we want to remember, and then we'll have more focus in life. We'll become more successful, and we will make a ton of money. Okay. That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Time now to. Listen to our Chinese teacher. Good, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到 ，If you're not journaling on a daily basis, it's something you ought to try. 假如你不是每天写日记，这是一件你应该尝试的事情。好，这边用到 on a daily basis 表示每天，其实就跟 every day 意思一样。那这边的名词 basis 它表示基础、根据。当我们用 on a 或是 an 加上形容词，再加上 basis， 就表示在什么的原则上，以什么为基础。像我们可以用 on a daily basis 表示每天的。On a weekly basis, 表示每周的 On a monthly basis, 每个月的 On a yearly basis, 表示每年的另外还有常见的用法是 On a regular basis, 表示规律的或是经常定期。那我们来看两个例句。She visits her grandparents on a regular basis, 就是说她经常去看她的爷爷奶奶。They go grocery shopping on a weekly basis. 他们每周会去采买日常用品。好，课文第三部分写到说，写日记是很好的记忆辅助工具。他说 ，We tend to forget most of what we hear, but journaling, even if we never reread what we've written, 
helps us commit things to memory. 我们常会忘记大部分听到的事情，但写日记，即使我们从来没有再去看过自己写过的东西。是会有助于我们记住事情的。好，那么句子里面用到 tend to， 它表示往往会怎么样，经常会怎么样。它是用来表达经常发生的动作或是习惯。那另外课文里面用到 even if 加主词加动词的句型，它是表达说即使怎么样，就算怎么样。even if 其实是 if 的强调说法，表达即使。纵使就算，那它后面接的子句呢，是在描述某一个条件或是假设的情况。这个情况不一定会成立。那么 ，even if 就是在强调说，不管那个情况是否会成立，都不会影响到结果。举例来说 ，We plan to go biking even if it starts to rain later。我们打算要去骑脚踏车，尽管待会开始下雨，我们还是会去。好，那这边要帮同学们区分一下 ，even though。它也有即使啊，虽然尽管的语义。可是呢 ，even though 是 though 或是 although 的强调说法。那它后面接的子句呢，是在描述确定的情况或是已经发生的事实，用来强调说，虽然这个情况已经成立了或是已经发生了，可是还是有某个结果。举例来说 ，even though it rained。We still had a great time biking around the town. 尽管有下雨，我们在那个城镇里面骑脚踏车还是玩得很开心。所以在这边，这个下雨已经是发生的事情了。那我们用 even though 来表达，尽管怎么样还是怎么样。好，以上是今天重点整理。我们回顾今天的单词吧。Self reflection. I always like to begin my day with a moment of self reflection. Paste. Kevin feels frustrated about how slow-paced his economics class is. Evaluate. After using the phone for 30 days, Lydia evaluated its features and posted a review online. Adjustment. My new job will require me to make several adjustments to my work habits. Strain. Please strain the pasta for me while I heat up the sauce. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.